So why didn't you, like, I had been doing ringside records for a few years and then it just sort of, I realized, okay, there's a level that I'm going to want to get to with this and there were other things that I wanted to do much more and I'm, I was like, it, it made sense. So I started making movies and basically converted the record label into making movies and um, which, believe it or not, still doing the thing that you were doing years ago with New Beginnings Records. I, I'm, you know, I go through the record store day list. I contact stores. They email me. I mean, it's much easier. I have it much easier than you did because I'm not calling people up and whatnot. I mean, it's all done through email and whatnot. And it's not as futile, but there are times I do sort of scratch my head and think, okay, wait a minute. Like, it's, it's, thank, thankfully the manufacturing costs, everything's easier and everything I believe is also cheaper now. So, um, yeah, the, uh, everything, everything back then was like, uh, was like torturous and like feeling around with your hands in a, in a dark room and you know, not, not, you know, not knowing how anything was going to turn out and also being treated, uh, everyone <clears throat> treated you like you were a stray dog. I mean, first of all, I was 16 years old. So if I show up at a place that prints record jackets, they're like, what do you want? You know, what are you doing here? And then when I tell them that I wanted to get, you know, 500 record covers printed, they would look at me like, what a waste of time. <laughs> you know, they, they just, it was, yeah. And, and then maybe there was a little bit of novelty that there's a 16 year old kid here that wants to get some records made. Okay, that's cool. He seems nice. All right, let's help him out. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So why didn't you continue with New Beginnings? Or does that sort of dovetail into Haywire going to Europe and things kind of ending? Um, I guess it's all sort of connected, but uh, I really, I, I never had a plan. I never had a goal with any of this. Have you ever, have you ever, like, if you, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but, like, have you ever, like, in your life, like, sat down and... Oh, yeah, for sure. Sure, I, I have, I definitely, you know, now I do, after, after I got out of punk rock, I had plans. Um, but um, at the time with New Beginning, Half Off, Haywire, Think Fanzine, I never had a plan. I just wanted to be a part of something that inspired me. And as long as it inspired me, then I was, I was gung-ho and you know there there wasn't anything i wouldn't do for it but it stopped and all of it stopped inspiring me i completely lost interest in, in all of it so and i'm going to get back to that i'm going to get back to that let's talk about you then joining haywire because you're doing new beginnings and then i as far as i remember in my research i remember you had gone to like a practice and you noticed that like i believe john bruce vadim and they were, I think they were playing with Rick and it was just, you would just notice like, Hey, wait a minute. This is different than, than how I remember these guys as musicians with, is, is that kind of the beginnings of that? Yeah. I knew that Rick and John and Buddy were playing. I'd never met Rick before, but I had heard about him for years and years and years because John and Rick worked together and John was just a huge fan of Rick's and I knew that Rick was a little bit older and more experienced with music. And um, I, I don't know, I, I didn't really have much in the way of expectations for what Haywire was going to sound like. I, I kind of had a feeling that it wasn't going to be something that I'd be into. And I went to go see them practice and was totally blown away. Uh, I, I remember they were playing the song that turned out to be uh, the song called So Good. And uh, I was like, wow, this is really cool. And, and I think part of it, too, was that John Bruce, when he joined Half Off, he didn't even know how to play bass. He, he learned how to play bass to be in Half Off. And we sort of groomed him to replace the original bass player. Well, by the time that, uh, that, that Haywire was practicing without me in the band, John had emerged as a really great bass player and just you know his sound everything about he had, he had found his own identity it was very inspiring to see them play and so I, they, didn't, I didn't know they were going to ask me to be in the band gotcha gotcha um so then you join the band you guys do private hell 
Did you record that record in 16 hours? I mean, I'm just going off of the uh, the uh, record uh, thing. I, I I don't remember how long how long it took us to record it. I I, I have no idea, and I, I remember where we recorded it. Spot recordings. It was like off the 55 freeway, you know, in like uh, Tustin. But um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, I I can't remember how long it took. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you remember anything about that recording in the sense of um, recording fast, in the sense of um, how long it took to lay down tracks before you were able to go in and sing? No, not, not really. And the only thing I really remember is I remember recording at Spot always feeling like there was something wrong with the sound, but feeling really paralyzed about or powerless about having options as to what to do about it, how to improve things. And you know, that, that's the whole feeling around in the dark. I always felt like, you know, if it's not right, you just have to accept it. And this is the best you can have. And, you know, I, I look back on, on our recordings and I feel like we should have recorded somewhere else. Well, it's funny that you say that because knowing you and then knowing like what got you started doing a fanzine, I'm kind of surprised you didn't, although probably back then it, 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 it seems inconceivable because, you know, we buy a phone now and you can record an entire record on a phone, but I'm surprised that you didn't in some way try to like get into home recording or look into like a way that, Hey, wait a minute, how can we do this better? <laughs> yeah, there was, there was no way to, I mean, the only other thing would have been to go to a different studio because everything was recorded on magnetic tape mm. and it was, uh, yeah, we, we were happy to be on 16 track magnetic tape. And so, you know, what that meant was a piece of magnetic tape that was like this thick, kind of like that thick. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, the equipment that went along with doing that kind of recording was, I and mean, we were talking about, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment let alone a building that had soundproofing and, you know, all that stuff. And then someone who knew how to use the equipment. It was all just so far beyond our, our comfort zone that um, we were at the mercy of finding someone who had studio time, a place that had a cost that we could afford, and then hopefully someone who was sympathetic to uh, hardcore music, which at the time... And the first little bit that we played for, you know, a sound engineer, they look at us like we had landed from Mars. Like, what is this crap you're playing? Even with Haywire, even, I mean, because I can kind of see that with Half Off just because punk, but even with Haywire? Well, Haywire, we recorded with the same engineer that had done Half Off. So he already knew what kind of knuckleheads we were. Gotcha. And thought that we were funny and, you know, whatever. So I do think Haywire sounded a little bit better than Half Off. I also think that by that time, uh, everyone had better equipment and probably knew how to tune their instruments better. And, you know, we, our, our arrangements were a little bit cleaner, too. So, well, speaking of that, speaking of arrangements, you guys do Private Hell, you guys play off that, and then you guys record Abominations. Did yeah. that, was that a much longer recording process in your, in your memory? Yeah, so Abominations... Um, which is a great album. I, I, like honestly, like like, and that's and and I have another question about that, but I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to tell you that. Well, thank you. I have a lot of regret about Abominations um, because the songs were were really. I, I was really happy with them, and we had gone in to record a demo of some of the material on Abominations because we wanted to try. Uh, we were gonna. We were sampling a bass drum sound by using an electronic <clears throat> an electronic trigger. So we were putting these electronic triggers in Vadim's drum kit that every time he hit the, the kick drum, it would sample in what we thought was the perfect kick drum sound, as opposed to trying to get his kick drum to sound perfect. All he had to do was make contact with it and it would produce that sound. So anyway, the reason I'm saying that is we recorded this demo of some of the songs from Abominations, 
and they came out so great. And so then it was like, all right, well now let's go back in and let's do the real album. And the um, the triggers didn't work. We couldn't get we couldn't get them to work. And so we were kind of it was really took the wind out of our sails, or at least for for me it it really did. But um, that material on abominations, I, I was I was happy with that. And, you know, one thing I wonder, you know, you bring up, like, triggers and stuff like that. I wonder if in some way that kind of played into when Head First went and recorded The the Enemy. I just wonder if somehow there was some, because you guys all knew each other. You know, they, you know, Drew and, and Kevin. And I, I just wonder if there was some, in some way, some maybe, uh, uh, although I know Kevin wanted it to sound, he wanted the Head First stuff to sound like prong. So, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just... I, this is why I love doing these interviews because I love hearing like these things that are just it's just interesting to me. So abominations because the way the way that I look at Haywire is you guys were playing, you guys go to Europe, you guys break up and then abominations is just sort of like the abandoned child that is that accurate kind of like yeah, yeah, abominations was um really recorded and released primarily to be a uh, to be in support of the European tour that we were doing and we I don't know that we rushed necessarily but the primary objective was to get it released in in, in Europe and uh, so that that's how that came out I, I, it's funny I'm thinking right now I can't even remember if New Beginning actually released Abominations I don't think that we did but um Anyway, or if we did, it was only on vinyl. I can't. I can't remember. There's I think another... it came out on WeBuy. I remember Rick telling me this like years later. Yeah, I the think European, the European label, not not New Beginning. But there was a vinyl of it early. Like I remember in early '90s. I remember, and so that would have been the New Beginnings one, right? Or yeah, I think no, that was also WeBuy. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So then. What did it for you? Like, you know, because, you know, you mentioned, you know, getting out of punk, punk rock. But honestly, I mean, I, 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 and I hope you don't mind me saying this. I don't think you got out. I think, you know, maybe you're doing different things. But, you know, I, I, I think your mindset and, and the way you look at things is still very much punk rock. I mean, look at what's behind you. It's a middle finger and a petty bone thing. So, I mean, what, what was it, though, that, that, that made you, I guess, pull, pull back? I just felt like it was really stale. Um, there, there was um, there, there were so many false prophets and so much just I, I don't know. It was so over the top and just bullshit and people pretending to be passionate or you know in their feelings about whatever and they, they had all these important ideas but no one actually was doing anything and then the other thing about it was that i felt like i put so much work into so many aspects of being a part of and it was it was to my own hindrance that i was doing that stuff it was keeping me from developing as as a, a person and you know being able to uh, to support myself and uh, I don't know it, it just it wore me out and also the the musical genre as well especially within the 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 faction of the scene that I was heavily involved with was also just extremely stale um, and and my my musical interests while still in the vein of alternative had, had really expanded and then also dovetailed in with all that other stuff was really the realization that I did not have the talent from a vocal standpoint and I don't play any instruments. So I, I didn't have what it took to get to the next level. And I really wasn't interested in learning to be a singer. And, you know, I didn't see myself growing my hair long and uh, looking really cool. And, you know, I, I was never going to be uh, Pat Dubar or John Bunch, uh, you know, it wasn't going to happen for me. So, you know, what the hell am I doing? What about, did you ever think, okay, well, I'll just be a label guy and, and I'll put out bands and I'll, I'll do that or no? No, because I didn't want to deal with any of these people in any of these bands. They all totally annoyed me. And, uh, you know, with, with, you know, 
with the exception of a few people, I found all the people in the scene to just be completely annoying. <laughs> <laughs>